Ah, uh, side quests, an integral part of any good role-playing game that provide depth to the story, keep the player engaged, and offer an interesting break from the main narrative. I think the reason game development to me became so satisfying is that the process of developing a game felt a lot like playing an RPG. I lost countless hours growing up on the Final Fantasy and Witcher series of games, and so it seemed logical to me that while finishing a game is fulfilling, the real world building comes from exploring around the main quest. And just like in an RPG, game development has a near unlimited amount of compelling side quests to distract you. These side quests might include learning how VET fields work, creating custom shaders, or even tinkering with physics simulations. While they might not directly contribute to the end goal of finishing my original game idea, these side quests are invaluable at improving your skills and gear. However, these side quests can easily rabbit hole endlessly, or even reshape the main quest into something new. So if you're wondering why I don't release big videos too often, well, here's some of the side quests I've been working on. If you were following me towards the end of last year, you'd know I'd settled on a cart-like marble racing game. I reused some old interior assets I'd made for something else, and had a lot of fun exploring how to get the physics and controls to feel right, as well as some rudimentary UI work. Eventually though, I got to the point where I wanted to downsize. The interior scene wasn't great for performance, and I kind of wanted to get it working on mobile one day. As the prospect of starting a new scene from scratch loomed, I decided it was high time to create some tooling to support this new direction, namely a tool to help me create tracks more easily. Go watch my previous video if you want to see how that panned out, but I continued expanding on it afterwards to see what else I could add. That meant creating custom resources to enable multiple spawn objects and controls as to how they would be placed procedurally around the track. Also moving away from CSG meshes, which were quite limiting in how they could be used and generating the whole road mesh from code. This allowed for proper track curvature controls and adjustable LOD that kept editing performance tight. But before I knew it, all this procedural mesh generation had unlocked a new side quest, revisiting an old procedural generation project. I'd previously used a subdivided plane and sampled vertex positions from a height map before, but this was fairly basic and resulted in some pretty hacky workarounds when I wanted to achieve, say, floating islands, for example. What I really wanted to tackle was 3D marching cubes. I wanted to see if it was a usable alternative to approximating a height map, but eventually threw some three-dimensional noise at it just for fun, which turned out to be really interesting, but was slow to generate. I had also started trying to teach myself compute shaders to try and speed this up, but it was around this time I realised my old forest video was a year old, and so yet another side quest appeared. This forest video was a much earlier side quest that made me think YouTube videos maybe aren't a terrible idea, as people seem to be into it. I figured it was high time to refresh the project and attempt to one-up myself with what I've learned over the past year, and sprinkle in some Godot for newness for good measure. As is tradition, I ripped the whole thing apart and largely started from scratch. I generated a height map terrain, populated it with trees and a house, then set about trying to improve the grass. I adopted an approach similar to last time, using chunked multi-meshes with three tiers of detail that fade in at given distances. And while I did get compute shaders to work, speeding up the generation time, I never quite nailed the spawn and culling logic. At this point, I took on yet another side quest to take a break from this, as I wanted to figure out how to simulate trees growing. This started simply, just appending branching cylinders to each other, but soon got complicated again when adding compute shaders back into the mix. Now, you might be wondering, isn't getting distracted by all these side quests a bad thing? Well, it depends on your perspective. If you're working on a game with a strict deadline or a commercial project, then it goes without saying that staying focused on your main goal is absolutely crucial. However, I find pursuing side quests within reason to be hugely beneficial. They can help you acquire new skills, discover innovative techniques, and most importantly, maintain your passion for game development. As long as you're learning and having fun, getting sidetracked by side quests isn't a bad thing. Remember, developing games should be enjoyable and fulfilling, so don't hesitate to explore those side quests that come your way. Who knows, they might lead you to new discoveries, ideas, and even better games in the future. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments which one of these side quests you want to see more of in future.